Next stage is Racket. Racket is setting up and executing the shot. There is a transition between React and Racket. This transition is moving to the ball or wave to the ball or creating space between we set up and execute the shot. When this transition between React and Racket happens, we would like to see moving from big steps to little steps and finding that find an exact point where we want to strike the ball. It is also nice when we see the back, back leg is set behind the ball, so the player is stable while striking the shot. This applies nicely to Ruben's run, stay, hit, where the player ha has the back leg behind the shot. It really gives them much better opportunity to hit the ball clearly and then recover easily. Once player is set to execute the shot, uh, there should be the biomechanical chain that, that has to be followed, releasing the energy from the ground, meaning from the, from the legs, from knee, from your hips, torso, shoulders, uh, arm, elbow, wrist, into the contact point. So remember, every single stroke in tennis, every single shot has its own swing path or swing line. And it is important in that swing line that we find what we call pass. That is definitely going to help you to analyze the player and also to teach the player the proper technique to develop the optimal uh, stroke. So let me explain the pass. The P stands for path which we're talking about the swing part of the shot, if it's, if it's loopy for forehand or backhand, if it's a short one for volleys or serve, all of these shots have absolutely different swing path. So that's one thing we look at, how the racket travels through the air. A stands for angle, which is about the angle of the racket, in which angle the player has the racket during the swing path. S stands for speed, and it is the speed that the racket travels through the swing path and it uh, influences the velocity of the ball. So that get, gets us to the contact point. At the moment of the contact point we have to look at three things, we call it DHT. D stands for distance, that means how far from the body the player hits the, hits the ball. H stands for height, so it depends if the, if the player hits too low or too high. Normally we would like to see the contact point between, our, between their knees and shoulders. And T stands for timing, which means how far in front of the body or how late the player is hitting the shot. So after the contact point we have the follow through. It is just a release of energy, it should definitely be relaxed, but while teaching uh, smaller kids we would like to always have the ending position of the swing path and it definitely helps on the ground strokes when they finish the shot and they catch the racket in the, in the neck with the non-dominant hand. That helps them to shape and, and memorize the movement, but of course when they get better they develop their own styles and technique and we don't really mind if they finish here above the shoulder, it really uh, depends on the shot. Another ex example of the follow through is on the serve where we would like to see finishing next to the left, left leg if the player is right handed. Be careful because sometimes player, players finish next to the right or between their legs and that's not how we want to, the shot to develop. On the racket phase, when we are in that transition and moving towards the ball, we want to teach fundamentals. And the very first thing we reinforce in the academy is the following. Doesn't matter how you set up to the ball, you have to feel the ground. Yes, yes, I know. For every single shot, there is a better position. I know this. But the most important part is the principle. As soon as the player understands that he has to move towards the ball and stay, it feels like a second. Obviously, it's not. we know that the time 
that we hit one shot is less than that. But the feeling that they have the ground on the control helps the player develop the feeling that they have control and balance while hitting the shot. Another important principle when we are on the racket phase is that we help the player develop a feeling of the weight of the racket in the hand. Where are they feeling the momentum of the racket, the weight of the racket on the hand? That's, that's key. Let me give you a couple of examples. Let's say we're teaching the forehand. As soon as that player goes on that take back and he has that racket behind him and close, he should be feeling the weight on a different part of his hand that when that head drops down and goes through the shot. Another example would be a volley. When that person brings a racket head up in front and tries to contact the ball, where do they, where do they feel the weight of the racket? These little things will help develop the body awareness that we're looking for in our athletes. In developing young players at base tennis, we have noticed that when we talk about the pass, which is path, angle, and speed of the racket, we know this. And most of the time, we just have to explain the player what all of these things are. But what is really key is not telling them this, is to show them and let them experience. Very simple. Example. Take a Conti grip and let the player play with the angle and the speed of the racket when he contacts the ball. On his own, he will develop an awareness of what's going on with racket, contact, and ball. And this is how we start the progressions. Always with the player, always in a control situation, then with the coach, then with the peer, then on the real tennis court. Now let's say we move to the HT, distance, height, and timing. We have to keep into account who the player is, how old he is, if he's cognitive, already ready to understand these concepts. But in the beginning, based on the concept, do it yourself, do it with the coach, do it with your peer, do it from the back of the court. Once the player starts to understand that the distance has to do with the movement, with the rotation and how he creates space, we start building layers. And we do that with height and with timing. When they contact that ball and we say, mm, how did that feel? Always ask the player, how did I feel? And then you can explain to them, it felt that way because it was late, because it was correct, because it was too early. What I'm trying to say is, do not tell so much. Ask more questions. Let them reflect on what's happening to them so they can quickly learn what's going on while hitting the shots. A great way to give feedback without really telling the player what to do is, let's say the player hits the backhand and the ball was completely late and they hit the side of the net. Instead of telling, hey, that was late, just ask, give them the feedback. How, where did the ball fly? Where did it go? How did it feel when you contact that ball? And the player will say, at the beginning, nothing, because of experience, I've noticed this. But then once you start, keep on pushing and pushing and asking and asking, the player will be like, yeah, I was late. I felt that ball too close to my body. That's why it flew that way. And now you got the player because now he's teaching himself on how to understand the feedback that he's getting from hitting the balls. Now, let me give you another example on how we teach angle. Let's say we're working on the serve and the player realizes that his ball is always flying up. Instead of us telling them the face of your racket is completely open, we just ask, how is the ball flying? And again, most likely they won't realize it at the moment. Now they are aware of it. Next few serves, they see the ball going up. Could it be that the face of the racket is too open? Or do you think you can close it? 
they do the self-reflection, they understand the concept, they understand how the hand moves, how the angle plays a role, that there are two types of angles, horizontal, vertical, how they help him direct the ball, they learn from the situation. Again, don't tell them all the time, that's our philosophy, ask, show, and let them experience, let them do it themselves so they can come up with their own answers.